Hi, I'm Robin Leto, I'm an ecological consultant and today on rather a wet day in mid-April we're on the Long Mind looking at another of the habitats of principal importance. Today we're looking at pools, standing open water, of which there are three types. Um, they really are classified on the basis of their nutrient content but we don't expect you to carry around a little kit to test how much nitrogen or phosphorus there is in the water. Today I'll be showing you the other things that you can look at to narrow down which one of the three types of pools that it is. And today we're looking at oligotrophic pools, which basically means nutrient poor. And they tend to be in upland areas, as you can see. They tend to be uh, really clear water, and that's one of the key things to look for. How green is the water? If it's beautifully clear, you've probably got an oligotrophic pool. So two of the key features of identifying oligotrophic pool habitats of principal importance is the really clear water and I hope you can see just how clear this is. Even over there where it's probably a metre and a half deep you can still see the stony bottom which is the other key feature. They often have these stony edges with relatively little plant growth um, and it's really that feature or those two features that show that it's likely to be oligotrophic. We'll also look for these two plants, but they are, remember, quite rare and harder to spot. Oligotrophic pools tend to be in upland areas because the water that makes up the pools is nutrient poor. But do look out for them also on sandy soils, uh, which are also nutrient poor. And another thing to look out for is if they're actually on peatlands, sometimes the peat stains the water, so it looks almost like weak tea. That's a subset, if you like, called dystrophic pools, but they're in the same hoppy, so you can lump them together. So in oligotrophic pools, they tend not to have a lot of vegetation on the edge, but two of the plants that you can look for on the edge of oligotrophic pools are shoreweed and alternate-leaved water milfoil. Quite a mouthful, but quite an easy plant to identify. It has really feathery leaves that stick out around the stem, normally in fours. So it's got a very feathery look about it and it grows in long ribbons. So have a look for that one. The other one, shoreweed, sort of looks like a spiky grass that lives underwater. So it sticks up a bit like tiny little cactuses, but unlike a grass, instead of having a flat blade, they're little cylinders. So if you can reach a bit, just pull it up and sit, check if it's a cylinder or a flat blade. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to identify oligotrophic pools. You're looking for three things really. There's very clear water, stony edges on the banks, and a couple of plants that you could look for, but they are quite rare, remember, so you don't always find them. If you do find something and you're trying to identify it and you're not sure, you can always talk to one of your friendly botanists. You could look in a book and see if it fits the description. Or there are apps these days that you can get for phones that help you with plant identification.